Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudabuyo playing Vanilla Minecraft 1.8.6 PC Edition and in this video I will be building a hostile mob farm. Uh, this is a very simple hostile mob farm. Uh, it's going to require 12 stacks of cobblestone to build plus a little bit more than a half stack of wood. Uh, this is a variant of the water channel method um, so it's not fully automatic. Uh, I will have to stay close by uh, for the mobs to spawn and to collect material. Um, but it's really easy to build. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of materials. And it's just perfect for producing a moderate amount of material right at the beginning of the game. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and grab all the cobblestone here. Uh, I've got 12 stacks of cobblestone and I'm going to convert fully 9 stacks of that into slabs. So there's 6 stacks of cobblestone into slabs, 9, and then I'm going to take half of a tenth stack and also convert that into slabs. Uh, let me clean this up here. Okay, now the 38 blocks of wood, uh, I'm going to convert all of the wood into ladders. Thirty-eight blocks of wood produces just to over two stacks of ladders, uh, and two stacks is what I'm after. Okay. Uh, don't need the extra sticks. Uh, we'll need these two stacks. Uh, I'm also going to grab a couple of water source blocks. Uh, I will be using this to create an infinite water source at the top uh, so that I can have as much water as I need to fill the, fill the water channels. Uh, I've got the torches and also this lily pad. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is a variant of the uh, water channel uh, mob farm design. Uh, I will be building this out over the ocean, uh, and that's for a variety of reasons, um, but uh, the main reason is it just makes it easier to manage the mob spawning uh, to make sure that uh, you're outside the 128 block spherical distance of anything on the ground that might also be able to spawn, uh, spawn mobs. Uh, the problem with building over the ocean is that um, you don't necessarily have a nice platform like this to build off of. Uh, usually it's out in the open water. Uh, and um, uh, but a lily pad can help with that. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a lily pad here. Uh, lily pads can be placed directly on water, and I can place other blocks directly against the lily pad. I can place a block on top, or what I'm going to do here in this case, I'm going to be placing a block on the bottom. There we go. Uh, and I've got the base of a pillar uh, in the middle of the ocean. Don't need the lily pad anymore. Uh, there we go, and I can just uh, start building my farm from this block, uh, even if there's uh, nothing like this nice little platform around. Uh, I'm going to pillar up 124 blocks uh, to get myself far enough away from uh, any islands or shore that might be around. Uh, strictly speaking, I don't have to go up quite that high, um, but uh, uh, because the um, uh, mobs can't spawn in the ocean, the closest area where they can spawn is probably underground caves. Uh, but uh, this gives me a, a good amount of buffer. So I'm going to pillar up 124 blocks, and then I'm going to use uh, these 35 slabs to build a 6x6 six six, um, uh, kind of a, a kill floor uh, where the mobs are going to fall onto when they s fall out of the uh, spawning chamber. Uh, and from there, I'm going to pillar up 28 more blocks. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start my pillaring here. Uh, again, this is to get myself uh, far enough away from anything on the surface uh, that might also be able to spawn mobs. Uh, 124 blocks, again, is probably a little bit of overkill. I'm actually going to be AFK slightly higher than that. Um, but um, uh, again, this is a good amount of buffer, uh, and it uh, just makes it easy to build. Okay, grab the other uh, uh, partial stack here. Uh, 
Most of the material that I'm using is slabs um, just to save on cobblestone. Uh, the pillar has to be built out of cobblestone, um, which is why I have uh, as much as I do. But most of the farm can actually be, be built with slabs and, and uh, basically halves the material requirements. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and build uh, a 6x6 six six platform using the pillar as one corner. Um, I will be building this out of bottom half slab, so I need to be careful to place the first one. There, you can see that's a bottom half slab. So I'm going to make this 6x6. Six six. There's 3, 4, 5, 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And just to complete the square here, There we go. Uh, this all needs to be filled in. There we go. And now um, uh, mobs that fall out of the spawning chamber are going to fall into this area uh, and, um, and then we'll be able to collect the materials here. Uh, so I'm going to pillar up 28 more blocks and build the spawning chamber. There's, 100 and, uh, there's 28 more blocks. And um, now what I want to do is I want to create a 6x6 six six ring directly over the uh, kill floor down below. There's 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now to complete the ring. Uh, now this one, I, I've um, switched to top half slabs again here. Um, uh, for the, uh, I will be using top half slabs until I put the roof on the spawning chamber. Um, the kill floor down there is bottom half slabs. Now everything is going to be top half slabs until the uh, until the roof. Uh, here, this ring, I do not want to fill this in uh, except for the corners. Just going to hit each one of the corners there. Uh, and that will leave this a uh, little bit of, of a plus shape right here in the middle. Okay, I'm going to pillar up one more block, and now I'm going to build the exact same thing uh, one layer higher. And the reason for the duplication is that the lower uh, layer of this ring uh, prevents uh, sunlight from uh, leaking through the bottom of the farm onto the spawning platforms. Uh, if I didn't have that there, uh, some blocks of uh, some uh, s blocks of the spawning platforms would have a light level that's greater than zero, and I, I want every all of the spawning uh, locations to have a light level of zero. Fill in the corners. There we go. So I basically have duplicated the layer below. Uh, now on this upper layer, I want to extend each side of the ring with a platform that goes out seven blocks. So I will, um, let me start with this side over here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And make sure that it's as wide as the ring. And back two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I do want to fill this in. There we go. There's one of the platforms done, uh, and now I'm going to be building a another platform, uh, one uh, one off of each of the remaining three sides. Uh, I'll fast forward through this bit, um, and I'll see you back uh, when I'm finished. Okay, and uh, that's all four of the platforms. 
Uh, it creates this nice big plus shape with a little a smaller plus shape hole in the middle. Uh, let's see what that looks like from the air. Uh, so that's pretty much what we've got so far. Now I'm going to want to pillar up one more block. Um, there's my pillow over there, and it's directly over this block here. And now I'm going to be creating an outline of this plus shape at the next layer. So I'm just going to go all the way around the edge, all the way back here. Uh, and I'm also going to fast forward through this, uh, so I'll see you uh, when I'm back at the pillar. Okay, I made it all the way around, uh, so I've got a nice outline here uh, all the way around the plus shape. Uh, it is time to add the water for the uh, water channels. Uh, but first I need to make a, an infinite water source because I'm going to need more than two water source blocks. So I'll just make it over here in this corner. Uh, now this is allowing water to dump through the middle here and down. So if there was anything down there that could be broken by water, I'd either want to clean that up before I came up here and built this, or I'd want to take precautions so that water isn't spilling over the edge here. Uh, and now I'm going to take uh, two water source blocks and I'm going to put one in each of the back corners of the uh, uh, water channel here. And this is going to create a nice inward flow. This is one of the things that differentiates this design from the standard uh, uh, water channel method. Um, the normal water channels are two blocks wide. Here they're four blocks wide in order to force mobs that fall into the water channel to stay in the middle. Uh, and that helps prevent spiders from clinging to the side and uh, clogging up the farm. Make sure that one has a nice uh, inward flow. There we go, there's number three. And uh, going back to the original one. Uh, now I'm going to need two water source blocks moving forward. Um, and uh, I'll lose one by fixing up this uh, infinite water source into, uh, in, uh, into, uh, to make it uh, have that inward flow uh, to put a water source block over here. Uh, so before I go ahead and destroy the infinite water source, I'm just going to temporarily place a block there, uh, and I'll pick that up in a moment. So there's one there. There's one there. Okay. And now it has that nice inward flow, as we've only got a water source block in each corner. Let's pick this up. Uh, and now the, uh, the water from all of the water channels should be extending to the edge of the plus, uh, the plus shaped hole in the middle there, uh, but it shouldn't be flowing over, so it should look exactly like that. Uh, okay, um, that, uh, uh, now it's time to pillar up one more block, uh, save those buckets for later. At this point, I need to build the spawning floors. Uh, each of the spawning floors is going to be a 9x9 nine nine platform over each uh, open area of the plus. There's three, four. 9x9 um, nine nine is going to actually carry um, the floor of starting from the corner where the sides of the plus would meet. 9x9 uh, nine nine would come over here. And so this would be the opposite corner. Uh, and that means that each of the platforms is going to extend over the water channel by one block here. Uh, one here and one here. So I'm going to go ahead and build this out. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine brings me to the edge of the plus. Again, over the uh, uh, outside edge of that water channel. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
brings me in line with the other side of the plus here. And so I'm just going to bring it all the way around. Again, nine blocks brings me one block over the water channel. And now I've got the square of that nine by nine platform. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in. Okay, so now I've got a nice 9x9 nine nine platform. I need to build three more of these, uh, but before I do, uh, so far I have not needed to worry about lighting anything. Uh, and that doesn't have anything to do with the fact that in this custom world it's always daytime. Uh, it has to do with the fact that uh, no matter where I was building the farm so far, I was never more than 24 blocks away from any spawnable location. Uh, so mobs wouldn't be able to spawn there regardless of what the light level was. Uh, um, so I could continue building this thing through the night. But now, uh, as it gets, uh, if it gets darker, um, I'm going to be, as I build these other platforms, I'm going to be at times more than 24 blocks away uh, from the corners. And so I'm going to add in a couple of torches uh, to light the area uh, of the corner here to make sure that mobs can't spawn over here when I'm all the way on the other side. Uh, so for that, I'm going to put two torches. I'm going to, from the corner, I'm going to skip one, two, three spaces and put the torch on the fourth block. Again, one, two, three spaces and put the torch on the fourth block. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and build the remaining three platforms. Um, each of them is connected to the other by a two-block uh, two bridge. Uh, and I will see you back on this platform when all the remaining three platforms are finished. Okay, I've got all three, uh, uh, all three of the other platforms done, uh, so all four platforms are finished now. Uh, let's take a look at what this looks like. So it's got the standard water channel mob farm shape to it now. Uh, the difference being that my water channels are four blocks wide uh, and the platforms extend over them by one block. Uh, that's, that's fine though. Uh, now I need to build the walls of the spawning area. Uh, and um, this is where my pillar was. I don't want to uh, pillar up here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, let's first switch back to uh, survival mode. Uh, I'm going to start pillaring now from the corner. This could be any corner, but I'm going to use the same platform where my pillar is. Uh, now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to trace the outline of, this, uh, of these platforms all the way around. Uh, and every time I see a torch, I'm going to replace it with a top half slab and then put the torch back on top. Uh, so I will see you when I'm back uh, over, this, uh, over this corner block.
Okay, that's uh, one layer of the wall finished. Uh, I will be building another layer. Now, it, because I'm using slabs, it does look like this farm is going to let a lot of light in from the outside onto the spawning floors. Uh, but slabs do not allow light to propagate through them in any direction, even though there's a gap here. Uh, so the spawning floors will all stay pretty dark. Um, I'm just using less material, and I'll be actually be able to see into the farm if I'm uh, from if I'm standing from the side. Okay, so I'm going to pillar up one more block, and I'm going to replicate this ring uh, at another layer, uh, and I'll see you back when I'm at the corner. Okay, that's the second layer done. Uh, again, it does look like it's going to let a lot of light in, uh, but it won't because slabs uh, block light propagation in all directions. Uh, now, at this point, the only thing left to do uh, is to put a slab roof over the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to start by creating four beams uh, that go all the way across. Uh, and um, now I'm switching to bottom half slabs. I should mention that uh, I have encountered problems in building these beams uh, whereby I kept falling down, uh, even though I'm holding this neat control. I, I have no idea why that was happening, uh, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of extra uh, caution in building these across. So there's one there just on the other side of the torch. Uh, I'm going to build another one uh, right here and another one right here, and another one right here. And I will see you back when all of those are finished. Okay, that's all four of the beams going across the roof. Um, now I'm going to uh, act, actually put some water in place. Um, this water needs to go, uh, I need four water source blocks, one at each intersection of uh, lines uh, where uh, tor lines extending from the torches would intersect. So if I drew a line from this torch all the way to the other side, uh, and I drew a line from this torch uh, all the way to the other side, uh, they would meet right against that block there, not that cobblestone slab, but just in front of it. Uh, and I'm going to want to put a water source block right there. Um, I only have two water source blocks, um, so I'm going to uh, create an, an infinite water source here. So that I can grab a couple more. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and do the other side first. Now the water here uh, is not, uh, its its intention is not to deter mob spawning. Uh, I have the torches for that. Um, uh, the, uh, the water will deter mob spawning, but um, that's not what its purpose is. Uh, there's a long-standing bug in Minecraft where light levels are not, um, uh, not computed correctly, and you can have something that's too dark uh, or too light. Um, and in this case, I want dark and uh, I could have blocks that are too light. Uh, these water blocks here that I'm adding as part of the roof, uh, they are going to be the last blocks that I fill with slabs. So I'll, I'll drop a slab on each of these water source blocks. Uh, and, um, and what will happen is because then the uh, farm will be completely closed off, as the water propagates down, uh, the block updates caused as the as the water dissipates will force the light level to be recomputed everywhere where the water touches. Uh, so the only places where the water isn't touching are those inner areas of the um, uh, of the spawning uh, the spawning platforms. Uh, and I've never really had a, a problem with uh, the light level there being uh, incorrect. So. It's mostly been in the water channels, um, but um, each one of the blocks along the water channels is going to receive a blocked update as this water dissipates. And that will force the light level to be computed correctly. 
Okay, let me remove this infinite water source now. There we go. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the roof, uh, taking care not to, um, uh, not to uh, destroy those water source blocks there. So uh, there's a water source block right there. I'm going to take a little bit more care in placing blocks of the roof. Uh, and that's just because um, uh, the blocks of the roof uh, would be a little bit harder to recover if I misplaced a block and had to break one. So you can see that uh, the water source block is just all by its lonesome there. Uh, those are going to be the last, um, uh, the last parts of the roof that I fill in. That should minimize the, uh, the impact of that, uh, of that bug. Okay, I'm going to leave the torches for now. I'll gather those um, uh, right before I fill in the rest of uh, the fill in the water source blocks. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and speed through uh, filling in the rest of the roof, uh, and I will see you back when uh, I'm ready to remove the torches. Okay, that's uh, most of the rest of the roof. I'm just going to go ahead and grab these torches. Uh, I don't uh, need them anymore. Um, actually, I haven't needed them for a little while, but um, I like to have a little bit of light up here at night uh, if, it, uh, if it actually was night in this world. And after I uh, fill in the remainder of the roof here, the torches and the water source blocks, I'm going to have just a little bit of material uh, left of that original 12 stacks of cobblestone. Um, but I will be using that to make a little bit of a crow's nest for AFKing. Okay, there's the last of the torches. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and replace each of these water source blocks uh, with a uh, cobblestone slab to complete the roof. Uh, that will cause a cascade of block updates as the water dissipates. Uh, which should reset the light levels uh, to the correct levels uh, for most of the farm there. Okay, um, there we go. Now, as the water dissipates, let's take a look at this from the air. Um, I'm going to be waiting up here for a little while uh, for the water to fall down at least so that it's no longer uh, over the killing floor there. Um, this is uh, how the farm looks like from afar. It's uh, a little bit strange looking, but uh, I'll be waiting up here for a little bit uh, for the water to dissipate over here, and that's because uh, the farm is now operational. You can see a spider over there just fell into the water channel. Uh, mobs that fall out of the farm uh, might land in water uh, before it dissipates from the killing floor. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't uh, want to have any uh, surprise mobs um, down below uh, or when I come back up uh, with the ladder. So I I'm on top here. Let's go back into survival mode. And I'm just going to jump off the edge uh, back into the ocean below. Uh, but I want to get my ladders ready because that's how I'm going to get back up to the killing floor. Okay, you can see the water is coming down here. Uh, my pillar is free. It's causing a lot of block updates, so I've got a little bit of a lag here, but that's okay. Uh, and now I'm just going to climb back up to the killing floor, uh, placing every single one of these two stacks of ladders.
This will actually place me just above the killing floor by a few blocks, um, uh, but uh, that's exactly where I want to be. Okay, there's one stack. Should be able to hear the sound of mobs falling onto the kill floor uh, right about now. I uh, just saw the outline of a mob up there. Okay, here we go. Uh, there's already some material accumulating. Uh, I'm actually standing on the narrow top of the ladder here. I'm standing. You can see the, um, the collision uh, or the hitbox there. I'm standing right on top of it. I'm not clinging to the ladder. Uh, and if I stay in this position, uh, this ensures that I am uh, more than 24 blocks away from each spawning location inside the spawning chamber up there, uh, but less than 32 blocks away. So mobs can spawn everywhere inside the spawning chamber, uh, every block of the spawning platforms, uh, but they are not going to despawn, which gives them uh, uh, the opportunity to walk into the water channel uh, where they will get sent through the hole and onto the kill floor down here. Uh, so it's, uh, it's coming at a pretty good rate. Uh, there are two problems with waiting here though, uh, um, uh, AFKing, and uh, the first one is one that's pretty well known, that's baby zombies, uh, uh, chicken, uh, that are riding chickens, the uh, chicken jockeys. Uh, if they fall out of the hole and they drift past this column here, if I'm sitting right here, uh, there's a small possibility that they could get in a shot at me uh, if I'm uh, if I'm standing here as they float past. Uh, that would knock me off the ladder into the water below, and um, uh, and then I'd probably drown if I wasn't at the keyboard. Uh, so I'd want to prevent that uh, that possibility. Um, the other one is much rarer, uh, but it's a bit more dangerous, uh, and that is. Um, Skeletons and zombies can uh, uh, can spawn wearing equipment, and if that equipment includes boots, uh, and those boots are enchanted with feather falling, they can survive this fall here, and they'll just be on the kill floor wandering around. Uh, if it's a zombie, it's actually possible for it to kind of move over here. I'm going to place a slab down there. It would actually be possible for it to move over here and climb the ladder and hit me. I've had that happen before. Uh, a skeleton will eventually wander over to the corner here and see me and then shoot me off the ladder. Uh, so I want to add a little bit of protection here uh, using the remaining blocks that I have. Uh, I'm just going to place down a, a bit of a barrier. So against the side of the ladder, uh, not the top uh, block of the ladder, but the block underneath it, I'm going to drop a cobblestone. So it's kind of uh, um, a diagonal to the pillar there. I'm going to place another cobblestone on top and a third cobblestone on top of that. And I'm going to cap it with a slab. Uh, and now up here, I'm going to add another bottom half slab. Uh, right there so that I have a half block gap um, and it's possible for a chicken jockey to land on here but even if I'm squeezed right into the corner um, it uh, it can't attack me from there uh, what it can do however is fall off the edge and as it's circling around it can get a hit in at me uh, so this uh, this uh, slab here I'm going to extend this by one more slab which would force the chicken jockeys to go too far that, so that they uh, wouldn't be able to curl around and get a shot in at me though. Uh, the, the problem with putting in this barrier is that it blocks my view of the killing floor so I can't actually tell uh, whether there's any dangers there when I go to retrieve materials. Uh, so I'm going to create a little platform to come around the side here. Um, uh, now I'm going to add a bottom half slab against the top block of the, uh, of the ladder there. There we go. Uh, you can see it's a bottom half slab. I'm going to take my last cobblestone and I'm going to put it uh, against the pillar underneath this bottom half slab. And then I'm going to cap that with another bottom half slab. Uh, and then I'll put one more bottom half slab against that cobblestone. Uh, so right at the bottom there. And now there's a one, uh, one block high uh, difference between the two. 
it is possible for a chicken jockey to land on this slab. Um, not here though, because it can't kind of curl around the uh, curl around the column. Uh, but it could land here. Uh, the uh, but that's not a danger, and the reason why is because this is a bottom half slab and this is a bottom half slab. Even though there's only a one block difference in height, uh, mobs can't really seem to notice that they could jump up here. So uh, there's not going to be any issue with mobs landing here and being able to walk over here and attack me. Um, and the same thing is over here. A uh, uh, chicken jockey could land here, but it's not going to jump up on top here because it doesn't recognize that it can uh, breach that height. Uh, need to extend this by one more slab. There we go. Uh, now, the, uh, the difference between this uh, slab here and the kill floor down there is uh, three blocks. Uh, so there's a three block height difference, which means I can just hop down there and collect materials. Um, you do notice that some of the materials are coming very close to the edge. Uh, on occasion, um, something will fall over the edge. Um, it's um, so this isn't completely lossless, uh, but the amount of material that uh, does go over the edge is pretty small, uh, so I'm really not worried about it. It's a pretty moderately producing farm, uh, so um, uh, I've got plenty of material here. So I'm just going to hop down here and collect the material, and then I do need one more slab here, my last slab. I'm going to drop it right there. And that's going to make it easier for me to get back on the ladder, ladder and return to my AFK position. So I'm just going to stay here. Uh, items uh, take about five minutes to despawn. So I'll stay in this position for, say, three to four minutes. Uh, and, um, and when the time comes to go collect material, I'll check to see if there's a chicken jockey here. I'll go over to my observation platform. I'll check to see if there's a chicken jockey right here. Uh, I'll peek around the side, check, uh, make sure that the uh, kill floor is clear of any dangers, uh, look up to make sure that there's no chicken jockeys floating down at the moment, uh, and then I'll just hop down, collect the material, and return to my AFK spot for another three to four minute wait. Uh, and this farm is, uh, is actually um, reasonably productive. Uh, what I need, um, what I'm, uh, the original purpose of building this farm uh, was to get uh, 80 uh, gunpowder. I've already got 56. It's just really not going to take very long to produce a moderate amount of material, uh, and, which makes this really good for uh, the very beginning of game uh, because it takes almost nothing to build. Uh, the amount of materials that go into it is pretty minimal. And the uh, and the farm is actually pretty easy to set up. So, uh, and that that is it for this video. Um, uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments.